Hi everyone, I hope you're doing great today. It's a sad day in Nigeria. At different locations in Nigeria, especially at the Lekito Gate on the island in Lagos State. Peaceful, innocent protesters gunned down by the Nigerian security operatives, killed in cold blood in their own country. In their own country, peaceful protesters who were not destroying anything, who were not affecting anyone, who were not attacking anyone, they've been there for days. And they were all killed. They were crying and screaming. They're shooting at us. They're shooting at us. They are killing us. And those men opened fire and killed them and murdered them and stained the already stained flag of Nigeria. In the 21st century, this happened. You know, I was planning to make a video earlier before this incident took place. I became extremely cold. And the reason I wanted to make a video earlier was to just help a lot of people understand what this whole end stars is all about. Some of the people you think are the corporates, some of the people you are pointing your fingers at are actually not the real people that are killing you. That's why I wanted to make a video. But I'm going to try my little best because I'm not really in the mood right now because I'm really, really angry. I am so pissed off. And then another thing, another side of me is also happy. And the other side of me that is happy is happy because the government of Muhammad Buhari is never going to get away with this one. I can bet you, I mean, they can kill all they want. They have already had something that they would not be able to handle. It's a spiritual thing. You know, I've been saying this over and over and over again. I keep telling people, I say, this thing is a spiritual war. That's why the whole protest had no leader. Nobody could tell who the leader was or who the leader is. And it just kept going on and kept spreading like wildfire because there was something that was released in the atmosphere at the right time because with God we believe that this is the time for the liberation of the indigenous peoples of Nigeria who were forcefully amalgamated against their own wishes by the agents of Satan the chief of whom is Lord Lugard we believe the time has come for our freedom that's why the protest started and they feel like they can actually just extinguish it, kill it. The same way they used to kill all the other protests. But this one is different. You know, I have been touring Africa, going around from one country to another. And while I was on this tour, I came across a video by E.A. Adeboe the senior pastor of the redeemed Christian Church of God worldwide. And when I heard him talking about restructuring, it hit me in a very special way. And I was like, wow. So Pastor Deboye has finally woken up. We've been screaming about this devolution of power for so long. It appeared as if we were just noisemakers. So he has now joined the whalers asking for Nigeria to be restructured, even saying that Nigeria would not survive if not restructured. When I watched that video, I made a decision that I will go home, that when I get to my base, I am going to start an organization that will pull all the southerners together so that we can have join our forces together and begin to fight for this restructuring thing so that regions, different regions can begin to self-govern and now when the protest started, so many people did not understand why the protest became so huge immediately. Now, for people who do not know, the Yorubas of Nigeria are not a small set of people. They are strong, they are influential. 
They are the people that the southerners have been waiting for all along. We have done everything possible, even to the point that the middle belt part of Nigeria had come down to join with the rest of the south and say, let's work together. But we still see the Yorubas working together with the central government of the day. And the man at the helm of the affairs of this union with the central government has been Bola Ahmed Tinubu. And Tinubu, why has he been so strongly behind this government? We finally found out he was nursing the ambition of becoming the president of Nigeria for 2023. There is not a single intelligent person I know who did not know that that was never going to age well. There's nobody from the moment Tinubu went into this alliance with the North, with this power that is destroying Nigeria today. We knew it would never end well. We remembered Abiola. We remembered how that these guys never care about anybody. They will use you and drop you like a hot potato and they don't care. We knew all of that was going to happen. But in fairness to Tinubu himself, I have not spoken with him one-on-one, -on -one, but I can get into his mind and tell you what he was probably thinking. Tinubu was probably thinking, oh, you know, since I have a way with these guys, since um, I have found favor in their sight, maybe I can continue to lick their butts until I can now get the power from them and at least move it from the north down to the south and then we can decide on what to do with it. He wanted to be the middle man that will now bring the power from the core north where it has now been radicalized down to the south and then to any other place. And maybe he believed also that by getting the power from them, rather than even giving it over to an eastern or, an eastern or whatever, that by the time he has the power, he can now start the whole process of restructuring the country so that everybody will be able to govern themselves. I believe strongly that this is what Tinubu had in mind, even though we did not like the whole idea of him partnering with this government because some of us who are researchers already know that these are blood suckers. So what happened afterwards? It was not too long after. Bola Ahmed Tinubu began to get signs that his own powers, his wings were now being clipped. They were clipping his wings, they were destroying him, they were just reducing his powers, they were just diminishing this guy. Bola was being completely stripped of every single ounce of power that they had given to him. That made him feel like the Lord over the entire Southwest. The next thing would be to finally frame him, put him in jail, and then probably just kill him immediately, give him some tea to drink, like Abiola, or do something to just eliminate him. That was the point where Bola had gotten to and what Bola was now thinking was now that he had been pushed to the wall, if there will be any opportunity again to actually bring serious chaos, monster chaos that will lead to their restructuring, that he would no longer stand in the gap to stop it anymore. Because several times in the past when we had tried to bring about the revolution, it is this same Bola Tinubu using his southwest machinery that has been able to stop the movement. Every time something like a massive revolutionary protest wanted to happen, it is the Southwest that often stands in the way and stops it from becoming a reality. And Bola has been instrumental to that. And so now that he saw he's been pushed to the wall and he has no other place to run, he was just waiting for the next trigger to happen. And when that trigger happened with that young man that was shot at point blank and killed by SARS, Bola, rather than just coming to stand in the way again, he just allowed the protest to happen. That's why we have answers in Nigeria. And so what does that tell you? For those of you who have been on the fence and don't know what is going on, what it tells you is that the unity we have been praying for, that we've been crying for, that we've been screaming for all along, 
it has finally happened. We've been praying and crying for the Yorubas to unite with the rest of us so that we can find this common enemy. It has been so difficult. So now that Bola knows that he is about to go the way of Abiola, he decided, you know what, I'm just going to keep to myself and allow this thing to just take on a life of its own. And that's why this protest was born. Do you know how I know? Again, to prove it to your father. Do you remember when the officials of the British consulate in Nigeria went to visit him? Have you asked yourself, why did they go to visit Bola Tinubu? Do you know what they went to visit him for? They went to visit him because they wanted him to intervene in the protest because they know that it was him stepping out of the way that gave rise to this mammoth massive protest that has now spread like wildfire all over the country. The British are so jittery. They are so scared to death about anything that has to do with Nigeria going through restructuring. Because the moment Nigeria is restructured, the intelligent southerners are now going to be the ones managing their resources. Even if they have to give anything to the British, it's going to be intelligent versus intelligent. A man as intelligent as Jonathan was too intelligent for them and they wanted him out immediately. Imagine when you have many more people more intelligent than Jonathan who are the ones going to be negotiating with them. The British are scared to death because without Nigeria, they are almost gone. Let me tell you today, what you see happening at Lekki, all the killings going on all over the place, it is not necessarily Buhari. The colonial satanic powers are behind it. So you see, the Dangote refinery, which of course is actually a refinery belonging to the colonial powers, satanic colonial powers. It is located somewhere on the Lekki extension Ibeju area far. And every single equipment, every single machinery, everything needed for that refinery has to pass through the Lekki toll gates. For as long as the Lekki toll gate, which actually leads to the Dangote refinery, is shut down, nothing is going to happen at the Dangote refinery. Nothing. So shutting it down was an indirect way of puncturing the British government's hold on Nigeria. Their refinery, they call it the biggest or so in West Africa, it does not belong to Dangote. Dangote is just an arrowhead. Remember the colonial company that bought Nigeria and paid cash? That is their new name. This is it. Dangote. That's who he represents. So how can you block like if it's one gate that leads to the, the, the seat of British colonialism in Nigeria, the refinery, where they're going to be refining the oil because of course Niger Delta was becoming too troublesome for them. So they had to move it and then they named it Dangote. And you didn't even know that, right? You were going to stop that. This is their lifeline. It couldn't have been stopped. That's why people had to be killed. It wasn't, it wasn't necessarily Buhari. Yes, Buhari is sitting there because that is the best of all the candidates, the most obedient of all the servants they've ever had to recruit in the history of Nigeria. Everything they want, it just happens with Buhari. That's why we're where we are today. This is why we have NSARS. For some of you who didn't understand what is going on, for some of you who never really understood what this whole exercise was about, I have explained it to you now and this is why we have to unite. The blood that has been shed tonight, the blood that has been shed across the nations, the cities of Nigeria tonight, it is going to serve as a seed that will birth the new nations. Nations, mark my words, nations that we've all longed for. And it is going to happen whether they like it or not. May God help us.